if each of these marbles is the same size, texture, and weight, the probability of choosing the blue marble, if you reach in without looking and grab one, is one in five. There is one blue marble out of five marbles in total. The odds in favor of choosing the blue marble is one to four. If this is the hand of cards your partner has and you were to choose a card without looking, the probability of getting an ace is three out of five. There are three aces out of five cards in total. The odds in favor of getting an ace is three to two. The probability of walking a duck out of the seven possible animals that we can take for a walk is two out of seven. We have two ducks out of seven animals in total, assuming that each animal has an equally likely chance of being chosen. The odds in favor of getting the duck to take for a walk is two to five. You may notice that if we're dealing with odds in favor, the numerator for probability is the same number as that first number in the odds in favor. So this is the favorable outcomes we know for probability. There is one blue marble, there is one blue marble. There are three aces, there are three aces, there are two ducks, and there are two ducks. So that first number in odds in favor does represent the favorable outcomes. You may also notice that odds is written as a ratio. So we are comparing one object to four other objects, those four other objects being the four other marbles that are not blue. So we have one favorable outcome, we have four unfavorable outcomes. There is one blue marble that we want, there are four other marbles that we don't want. There are three aces that we want, there are two other cards that we don't want, there are two ducks that we want, there are five other animals that we don't want. If we're dealing with odds in favor, that first number represents favorable outcomes, what we want. The second number represents unfavorable outcomes or what we don't want. It's written as a ratio and similar to probability, it tells us how confident we can be that a particular event is going to occur. Two really important tips when you're dealing with odds questions. Number one, you're going to notice that I specified, am I dealing with odds in favor or odds against? Now I actually color coordinate them so so that it's easy for me to remember odds in favor or odds against. Tip number two, it's easier for most students if you begin with probability and then move into odds in favor and then if necessary move into odds against. For example, what are the odds in favor of tossing a heads on a coin? I'm going to start with probability. So the probability of getting a head when we toss a coin is one half. There is one head on a coin. There are two possible outcomes, heads or tails. Now I'm going to turn that into odds in favor. So this represents my favorable outcomes. There is one head on the coin, and then there is one other side on the coin that is not a head. So you're going to notice that these two together add up to the total number of outcomes which is the denominator on probability. So odds in favor, there is one thing we want, which is the head. There is one thing that we do not want, which is not the head, or in this case, the tail. What are the odds in favor of rolling a four on a die? And again, we're going to assume it is a regular six-sided die where each side has an equal probability of being rolled. I'm going to begin with the probability. So there is one four on a die. There are six possible sides that we could roll or six possible numbers we could get on a die. There is one favorable outcome, one four on a die. There are five unfavorable outcomes or five numbers on the die that are not a four. One number that is a four, five numbers numbers that are not a four. Together, these add up to the total amount of outcomes that we could have. Now our next one is asking for the odds against rolling a five or greater. I'm going to begin with finding the probability of rolling a five or greater. So on a regular die, there are two possible numbers that are five or greater, five or six. So the probability of rolling a five or six, so there are two numbers out of six. You could reduce that if you want. I'm just gonna leave it like this for a minute. I'm now gonna go to odds in favor. So odds in favor, there are two numbers that are five or greater, which means there are four numbers that are not. I'm then going to 
to flip that to get my odds against. So there are two numbers that are five or greater, which means there are four numbers that are not five or greater. So odds against is now unfavorable outcomes compared to favorable outcomes. So there are four things that we do not want. There are two things that we do want. And then if you did not reduce the probability initially, you could always reduce it at this point. And our last example goes back to odds in favor of drawing a jack from a deck of cards. I'm going to begin by finding the probability of drawing a jack. I know there are four jacks in a standard deck of cards out of 52 cards in total. So now I'm going to move into odds in favor. And again, I didn't reduce it initially. It's going to give me four jacks compared to 48 cards that are not a jack in the odds. If you were to reduce this fraction, you would go right into the one to 12, but we can see at this point, both of these numbers are divisible by four. So I'd go four divided by four to get one, 48 divided by four to get 12. So we can see that when dealing with odds in favor, that first number represents our favorable outcomes. That second number represents our unfavorable outcomes. If we add the two together, we will end up with the total amount of outcomes, which is the denominator when we're calculating probability. So odds in favor, favorable outcomes is the numerator on probability. The two added together, favorable plus unfavorable, gives us the total amount of outcomes. So that's how we can move between odds and probability. So if we know that the probability of an event occurring is 0.3 or 30%, the odds in favor of that event occurring, so this is the favorable outcomes, we have a 30% chance of that event occurring, which means we have a one minus 0.3, which is 0.7, chance that that event will not occur. Together, these add up to one. That is all possible outcomes. So when given the odds in favor of an event occurring and asked to determine the probability of that event occurring, we know that we can move from odds in favor to probability. Favorable outcomes becomes the numerator. Add them together, this becomes the total amount of outcomes. And then if we go five divided by eight times it by 100, we can compare it to whether or not we are above or below 50%. So we can see that we are above 50%. So therefore we have a greater chance of that event occurring. You also can probably see by looking at this five divided by eight is going to be over 50%. But if you weren't sure, then turn it into a percent and then you can easily make that comparison. And that strategy is one that a lot of students find very effective when asked to determine which event has the best odds. And you have to watch each of these is odds in favor. So we know favorable outcomes goes in the numerator. We can figure out what are the total number of outcomes possible by adding together favorable plus unfavorable for each of those events. And then if we turn it into a decimal or percentage, you can now look to see which one is the greater percentage or decimal. That is the event that has the best odds. So in this case, this is the highest value. So A has the best odds of occurring. The one thing you really have to watch when dealing with odds questions is the interpretation of the question. So for our final example, which comes from your textbook, we are told that grade 12 students want to include one or more game at their charity carnival. They need to choose between game A and game B. The odds against winning game A are 11 to three. So I'm going to begin by figuring out what is the probability of winning? So if there are 11 chances that we will not win, there are three chances that we will win because this is the odds against. So I'm going to put my three in the numerator, add them together. There are 14 possible chances in total, and then I can calculate the percent of winning game A. The odds against winning game B are 17 to six. That means there are 17 chances we will not win. There are six chances we will win. So the probability of winning, I'm going to put that six in the numerator, and then I can add up 17 plus six is 23, which goes into the denominator. There is a higher probability of winning game B. Which game should we choose? Now here's the key. The goal is you want to raise as much money as possible for the animal shelter. If people are winning, you are paying out money, which means that you're not going to be able to give as much money to the animal shelter. So in this particular case, you actually want to choose game A. It is a lower chance of winning, which means more money is going to be raised.